A 20-foot ladder with one end on the ground leans against a wall. The foot of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a rate of one half foot per second. How fast is the tip of the ladder moving down the wall when the tip of the ladder is 12 feet above the ground? In your book on page 194 is a list of six steps to follow when doing a related race problem. We'll follow the list in our solution and add an important step seven at the end. When you work related race problems on your own, make sure that you address all of these steps. Step one, draw a picture and give and define labels to important quantities, both variable and constant. A good picture is very important. A related rates problem is not complete if a picture is absent. Pause the video for a moment and sketch a picture for this problem. Here's a possible picture. So we can see the important elements of the problem here. We have the ground along which the ladder is pulled, the wall on which the ladder leans, and of course here is the ladder. And the horizontal arrow, this one indicates the step of the foot of the ladder being pulled away, and in response this arrow indicates the tip of the ladder moving down the wall. We need to work with variables too, so we'll need to assign names, that is letters, to important quantities and include a written statement about what these variables represent. So one important variable is the distance s, which is the distance of the foot of the ladder from the ground. So let's s in feet be the distance of the foot of the ladder from the wall. We put s on the diagram. Now units are very important in these problems, so whenever possible give units to these measurements. In this problem we'll use feet for length, since that is the unit used in the problem. The distance of the tip of the ladder from the ground is also important. In fact, we want to know how fast this tip is moving as it slides down the wall. So let h equal the distance in feet from the tip of the ladder to the ground. And then we also put h in the diagram. And finally, in these problems, there are often quantities that do not change but are important. Any such important quantities need to be noted in writing and added to your picture. So we want to identify the constant unchanging quantities. And of course, in this case, it is the length of the ladder. The length of the ladder is 20 feet. We indicate that on the diagram also. Next, we read the problem again and look for important numerical information about our quantities. This is information about how fast things are changing. Look for words like rate, speed, changing, moving, words that suggest change or motion. In this problem, as seen in red, the foot of the ladder is being pulled away from the wall at a rate of one half foot per second. This is telling us what, the what is the derivative with respect to time of s. This carries units also because s is in feet and t is in seconds. The units for ds dt are in feet per second. So the given numerical information, in addition to what we have already identified, is ds dt equals one half foot per second. This tells us how fast s is changing. The ds dt is positive because s is increasing as the foot of the ladder is pulled from the wall. Next, we clearly state what it is we wish to find. This is found in the last sentence of the problem. It says, how fast is the tip of the ladder moving down the wall when the tip of the ladder is 12 feet above the ground? So we declare the rate to be found, find dh dt when h equals 12 feet. Now at this point, it might be tempting to set h equal 12 feet and put that in the diagram. Do not do this. Remember h is changing and we need to leave it as a changing variable, that is as a function of time. If we, de if we declare it to be constant, we lose the information on the rate of change. h will equal 12 during this process, but only for an instant. We'll eventually find the value of dh dt at the instant in time when h equals 12. So the h equals 12 information will be used later. These first three steps are very important. Once you have completed the third step, you will have a good sense of what the problem is saying. Now we use the variables. Our first task is to write an equation relating the variables. Our variables are h and s. Look at the picture to see how they are related. 
And we see by the Pythagorean theorem that s squared plus h squared is 20 squared. You can see from this equation that as h gets bigger, as s gets bigger, h gets smaller. This is also reflected in the picture. We're now going to clear the workspace to give us room to continue. Remember, you can always back up in the video to see previous steps again. So here we are. We've kept the information about what it is we wish to find. That is dh dt when h equals 12 and what we've found about the relationship between the variables. Okay. Remember related rates problems, everything that changes, changes as a function of time. This is why we can take derivatives with respect to time. To remind us of this t dependence, and maybe to help with the next step, we can write s as s of t and h as h of t as shown in the next line. Okay. This makes the t dependence clear. Once we have an equation, for the relation between the variables, it's time to perform the differentiation with respect to t. Okay. This will lead to the value of dh dt that we seek. So we now want to differentiate with respect to t the relation found in step 4. Okay. So we place a d dt on each side of the equation. d dt s squared plus a squared equals d dt of 400. If two things are equal, as we have down here, then their derivatives are equal. Okay. Now remember related rates problems, everything that changes, changes as a function of time. Okay. So if you want to remind yourself about this relationship and that the derivatives are respect to time, you can always write this in another way as shown here. Okay. So this, these two relationships are really the same. We've used the fact that the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives to factor the derivative over the sum ends. Okay. We now take the derivative with respect to t of both sides of this equation. Okay. So here we differentiate s squared using the chain rule. Differentiate the square first. That gives us 2s of t. And then by the chain rule, we differentiate the thing being squared, and that leads to the s prime. The h of t squared is handled the same way, and of course the derivative of the constant 400 is 0. We could also write ds dt instead of s prime if you want, and that leads to another form, equivalent form of, of this differentiated relation. Okay. Now at this point, again, remember we want to find dh dt here, so we can solve this equation for dh dt. Okay. So this is just civil algebra, leads to the following relationship. We have dh dt equals minus s over h ds dt. We did two things here. We first pulled the 2s ds dt over to the right side of the equation, and then divided through by the 2h. And that isolated the h dt is minus s over h ds dt. Okay. So again, we're going to clear the workspace and finish up the problem. So here we are back. We want to find dh dt when h equals 12 feet. And we know that dh dt equals minus s over h ds dt. We can now find the value of the desired rate of change by inserting the given quantities for the variables and rates of change. So in other words, we're going to put in numbers for these variables on the right-hand side of this equation. There's three variables here, the s, the h, the ds, dt. We'll put in numerical values, and that'll lead us to our solution or our answer. Okay. So to do this, we know that ds, dt is 1 half foot per second. That's easy. And we want to find the rate of change when h equals 12 feet. We also need the value of s at this instant, and this again comes from the Pythagorean theorem. So when h equals 12, at that instant, we have s squared is 20 squared minus 8 squared equals 20 squared minus 12 squared, which is 256. Taking square roots, s equals 16 feet. And therefore, when we make the substitutions, we now have values for s, h, and ds dt. We find dh dt is minus 16 feet. 
That's because S is 16 divided by 12 feet, because H is 12, times 1 half foot per second. Okay. So we've uh, kept the units in this problem, and notice that when uh, cancellation and simplification happens, uh, we get an answer in feet per second, and that is what we expect for units of dH dt. So at the instant when h equals 12, dH dt is minus 2 thirds foot per second. Our last important step, step seven, is to interpret our answer. Okay. So we're asked to find how fast the tip of the ladder is moving down the wall. Okay. So our conclusion might be stated like this. The tip of the ladder is moving down the wall at a rate of two-thirds foot per second. No, we've eliminated the negative sign. The two-thirds foot per second is the speed, which was asked for, and tells us how fast the ladder is moving. The negative sign tells us that h is decreasing at this instant, that is that h is getting smaller, and this is consistent with the fact that the tip of the ladder is moving down the wall. You can add another th sentence if you like to further clarify this, and note that the negative sign in the value dh dt tells us that h is decreasing at this rate. And we are done.